Hey guys, welcome back to another week at Megging's case study videos. Today we have a case from a cautious orthopedic um, physician. Yep. We like to keep things a little diverse and up with the belly for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. By the way, happy New Year's to everybody. Uh, let's do this case. I, I think it's pretty good because a lot of people see this uh, this case um, in every specialty, so uh, it'll be good to go over. Let's get into it so we know what case we're talking about. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Um, so this is a 34-year-old female, no past medical history. She's a little obese, uh, but she's playing soccer and she came in with right ankle pain. So she said she was playing soccer, uh, inverted her ankle while playing, and she endorsed immediate right ankle pain. Um, and so she went to the ED, and we were called by the ED, mm -hmm. um, so I went down to consult uh, this lady. So, uh, you know, she's complaining that she has right ankle pain, and after the incident, she wasn't able to bear weight or ambulate. Okay. Um, but she's denying any numbness or tingling. So her MSK exam, you know, her skin is intact, which is good, no open, great, no no open fractures, nothing like that. Um, tenderness to palpation, pinpoint tenderness, I should say, to the lateral malleoli. Um, no tenderness palpation to the medial malleoli or the forefoot or anything. She has severe swelling to the lateral aspect of the ankle and the forefoot. Sounds and so, painful. Yeah. And so, of course, her range of motion is very limited, secondary to pain. Um, her extensor halcus longer, tibialis anterior, gastroc soleus are intact. Uh, she has sensation intact from L4 to S1 distribution. And her dorsalis pedis pulse is also palpable. So she's no vascular intact. She's neurovascular tech, the most important thing for an ortho exam, which is fantastic. Um, and, you know, I tried to have her stand on her feet a little bit, and she was able to bear a little bit of weight on the right ankle, but not completely. I would say 30%. So she definitely wasn't ambulating on it. She's not ambulating. Um, so... Let me tell you, foot pain is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you would know, right? <laughs> um... So, what do you think we did next? In normal ortho fashion, got x-rays. Yeah, Let me we, guess, hold on, I can guess. Yeah. AP lateral and oblique views. <laughs> yeah, except you're missing one. They'd be one. great at ortho. <laughs> AP lateral, oblique, and for this one, with um, ankle injuries, especially sprains, you want to get um, uh, what's called an ankle stress view. Huh, okay, so tell me about that. What's an ankle stress view? Uh, Basically, you want to get the mortise view of the ankle to ensure okay. that the deltoid ligament, which is on the medial aspect of the ankle, is still intact. You said she had an inversion injury. Inversion injury. but Even with an inversion injury, you want to be sure that the medial ligaments are intact? Yeah. Um, when the deltoid ligament actually tears, Studies have shown that only 50 to 55% of patients have tenderness to the medial malleoli. So with any um, ankle sprains, any ankle injury, you want to get the ankle stress view to make sure the deltoid ligament is intact because it's very important in terms of the stability of the ankle. It is the strongest ligament in the ankle, so um, it determines whether the ankle is stable or unstable. So we got the, um, the x-rays, and for this lady, it shows that she has a right closed uh, transverse distal fibular fracture, um, classification Weber B. It's a lot so, of words you just did about me. Yeah, a lot of words. What I took out away there. from that is <laughs> she broke her foot. <laughs> Essentially. Break it down. So yeah, let's talk about distal fibular fractures, right? Okay. So most ankle injuries occur because of an inversion injury mm -hmm. as opposed to an eversion injury, and so. Um, an inversion injury is likely due to tension um, applied to the surrounding soft tissue um, of the lateral ankle and mainly the lateral collateral ligament. That's the more important um, ligament on the lateral aspect. So there's, this results in essentially ligamentous injury, which is a fancy way of saying ankle sprain. Um, but sometimes what happens is you get a complex uh, tear which is when you have a rotational injury with that uh, ankle sprain, and that causes an extra pressure on the distal fibula, um, resulting in a fracture. This is what happened with their patient. She inverted her ankle, sprained her ankle out on the field. That caused a disruption of the syndesmosis. Syndesmosis, yep. Causing a fibular fracture. Right, the syndesmosis being the connection between the tibia and the, the fibula. fibula. Um, so yeah. And the syndesmosis plays an important part here. So um, 
Another, actually, another thing that plays a very important part in ankle fractures um, and ankle injuries, period, is BMI. Um, okay. That's a major risk factor for ankle sprains because all of the weight is in your on, ankles. on your ankles. Um, so for diagnosing, uh, you want to get x-rays, right? Yeah. We talked about um, AP, oblique, lateral, and then the ankle stress view. So tell me, with these three films that you got, do you also shoot for a proximal tibia, fibula? Like, when are you concerned for something like a mesenius fracture? Nice. Um, Showing off my orthodontist. Yeah, so, I mean, that's based on your clinical exam. So you want to palpate the, the proximal tibia and fibula and see if they have any pain there. If they don't, you don't need to. Um, you know, with every fracture, they'll have localized pain. But, you know, this lady didn't. We didn't need to get it. Okay. Um, so... With an ankle stress view, you, don't, you want to make sure the mortise joint space um, is four milli- less than four millimeters. And that tells us that the, um, the, the deltoid ligament is not disrupted. If the deltoid ligament or that mortise view is more than um, four millimeters, four millimeters um, that means the deltoid ligament is disrupted. And, and that changes that is, your course of treatment. Right. So because that's why that one view is very important. Exactly, especially for ankle injuries. Um, and with a deltoid injury, that is equivalent essentially to a medial malfracture because, because of that disruption, um, the ankle joint is completely unstable at that point. So that determines a lot of our treatment process. So that being said, let's go through the Weber classifications that I talked about earlier. Our woman has, or our patient, has a Weber B. Weber B, yeah. Okay. So Weber A is below the syndesmosis. Weber B will be at the uh, level of the syndesmosis. And Weber C will be above the level of the syndesmosis. So why is this classification important? In terms of the stability. Okay. Um, so Weber A, it's below the syndesmosis, which means it's not, the syndesmosis is not affected whatsoever. Um, this will be completely stable. So those patients, you just recommend rice, kind of rest, ice? Essentially rest, an elevate. ankle fracture, or ankle sprain. Okay. Um, so, you know, we give them a air cast. Um, basically, it, it's like a U-shaped uh, orthotic, which stab- st- uh, stabilizes the ankle itself. And then these patients are wavering as tolerated, like you said, rice. Uh, Weber B, it's at the level of syndesmosis, so this is where it's important to get the ankle stress view mm-hmm. to determine stability versus unstability. If the mortise view or the ankle stress view is normal, then it means it's stable. If it's uh, disrupted, if the deltoid ligament is disrupted, then it's unstable. And you treat each of those differently. So the stable one will be treated just like Weber A. The air cast and rice. Um, Weight bearing is tolerated. And then Weber B, Weber B, which is unstable, will be um, operative. Okay, what do you and, do? And for Weber C, which is above the syndesmosis, disrupted, so that's also going to be operative. So our patient had a Weber B stable Correct. fibular fracture. Yep, yep. So she got put in an air cast, told her she can bear weight as tolerated, some pain medicine, some rice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's important to know is if you have a patient with a Weber C, you want to immobilize these patients, not with an air cast, but with an AO splint or, or a short leg cast, okay. um, just to protect that stability. And then, you know, you want to refer these patients to ortho as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a little take on distal fibula fractures. So with this, since it's meant for everyone aside, or since this is meant for people even practicing not in orthopedics, what do you recommend to the person in the ER or urgent care family practice the gen surge for someone that says, listen, I was walking, kind of slipped, my ankle twisted this way, and now it really, really hurts? Yeah, so, I mean, first thing is get the x-rays. Best objective diagnosis in ortho, which is amazing. The best part about ortho, right? Um, and make sure you get the ankle stress views. And then determine whether it's a Weber A, B, or C. And then go from there. When in doubt, if you're in a hospital, obviously get ortho consults. Mm-hmm. 
um, if you're, you know, primary care, private office hub, or, you know, urgent care, again, you know, get the x-rays, determine the, um, the, the severity of the, the fracture. And when in doubt, guys, you know, you can always immobilize this patient. Nothing's gonna, nothing bad's gonna happen by immobilizing these patients you're going to get in trouble if you don't immobilize them. So you better be safe than sorry. Essential. And always just follow up with orthopedics. Always follow up with orthopedics. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's it, guys. That's uh, distal fibular fractures. Um, I would talk more about ankle fractures as a whole, but that would take up 30 minutes and to, to condense this video as much as possible. You know, we just did distal fibular fractures. But if you are interested in talking about ankle fractures as a whole, please comment so we can, uh, you know, do okay. another video another video coming in coming up weeks and go from there all right guys that's it today enjoy the new year yeah bye